This video looks at examples of the different types of orbits followed by light in a Schwarzschild geometry, as well as the conditions that describe each orbital type. Using the equation of motion for light in the equatorial plane, an expression is derived that is subsequently numerically integrated using a modified Mathematica notebook that is freely available on the web. So in the last video, we established conditions for determining the difference between a scattering orbit, shown below here, and a plunge orbit. And, and a couple other cases too. Now, this difference could be, we found, could be related to the impact parameter B. So here we have a photon. Here's the path of the photon as it moves past the Schwarzschild mass here. Point of closest approach. It goes through the orbit changes direction. The path changes direction by this angle here, delta phi. Um, from the schwarz type mass here, here's the radius, here's the angle phi, and this is the change in phi that we're interested in. And this impact parameter here, this light wave, by the way, starts, this photon starts way out towards infinity here, a long way off, and for a scattering orbit, it will continue a long way off down here. This impact parameter can be related to units of the angular momentum times c over e, and in the rest of this video, we'll look at a dimensionless case, just a ratio of these numbers L and E that we'll use, as you'll see shortly in the program. All right, so let's start with our equation of motion in the equatorial plane. This one here we found in the previous videos, particularly in the last video. And we re rewrite this. Here's the effective potential, and rearrange it a bit, and then we'll take the square root over here. Now. This should be plus or minus here, and that reflects two different directions, dr, d lambda. Lambda is the affine parameter, not proper time, of course, not proper time. And this is some other affine parameter, and plus or minus the square of this here. This, will, this plus or minus being for the direction in which the path of light goes. Now, we also have from the previous video, the angular momentum is related to this object here, or one on, one on the angular momentum is this object, or d lambda d phi, which would be a useful result, is r squared on L. Okay, moving next bit, and that leads to, if we multiply d lambda d phi times dr d lambda, it's r squared on L times this square root object here. dr d phi will give us r squared on L times this object here. Uh, I'm just dropping the plus or minus here. Uh, it's just a question of direction. Uh, um, it would be handy, it would have been handy in this video to put the minus sign here, as you'll see later on why, but either way, it's just, that's just the direction of motion, that's my particular concern at the moment. R squared over L, uh, when we take the reciprocal, d phi dr, we get L over this object here, and d phi dr is L over all of this. So here we are, and so this is how phi changes with respect to radius, the angle changes with respect to the radial coordinate, is this object here. Alright, next bit. Now rewriting that, just separating the differentials we have over here, and the relationship here between the radial coordinate and the uh, new coordinate u for, for orbits, as we've seen in the orbital equation in past, past videos, r is 1 on u, so dr is minus 1 on u squared du. And where the dr is, we're going to put this object here involving the u's, where the r's are we're going to substitute 1 on u in, so this here, L on R squared becomes U squared times L. Over here, 1 on R squared is just U squared. And over here, 1 on R is 1, or just U, sorry, just U. Okay, notice so we do have the minus over here, so it gives us minus L du. So d phi is minus L du. And next line over here. Okay, um, now we numerically integrate this to find the total change in the angle phi, as you saw in the first in, in the diagram on the first page. Note the change in sign, which can be accomplished by reversal of the limits of integration. We are only interested in the net change of angle, so whether you include the minus sign or not, it's just that, that will, if we have a minus sign here, then we're integrating in the negative direction, the angle, and if we have a plus sign, we're going in the anti-clockwise, usually conventional direction. We're really just interested in the net change of angle, not so much, not really the direction. Now there exists a good program for carrying out this integration using a mathematical program, and that can be found on the website of the company's James B. Hartle's textbook, and that textbook is called Gravity and Introduction to Einstein's General Relativity, 
and other versions can, by other authors can also be found on the web as well. And they're generally just modifications of this one. Now, note this program needs to be adapted for light orbits. And what that means is we can adapt it. The potential function V quoted in the um, in the notebook has this minus U term here, and that's for particles with mass. We don't want that. We just want to use uh, light has does not have mass, and when we do the equation of motion we, for light, we don't get this object here. We get this here, which you did see earlier on, or oh, certainly. All right. So, and the one other thing too, when we integrate, um, the Hartle program has the square root 2 factor here, which we don't need, as you saw earlier um, on the previous page. And so we change that to just L times 1 on the square root of the energy minus the potential term here. And then we have some limits of integration. <coughs> Next bit over. So, we found in the previous video that scattering orbits, that's coming in from infinity and then going back out to infinity, follow this condition. 1 on b squared is less than the potential of the maximum point, so you'll need to look up that video for that, which is this object here. Uh, take the reciprocal and the square root, and we have b is greater than 3 root 3 times the units gm on c squared, for the, for the mass involved in the particular case you're looking at. Or if you want to make it dimensionless, then you need to factor those units out. Now for photons, they'll be captured by the central mass and spiral inwards towards the origin, that's plunge orbits, and 1 on b squared is greater than this object here, which is this, and b is less than, or if you rearrange that, take reciprocal and take square root, uh, you'll get b is less than 3 root 3 times the units gm on c squared. Now, I made this claim in the previous video, I didn't show any orbits to back it up or anything, so hence the reason for making this video was to show you some of these orbits and to show you that these claims are at least justified in some way, at least with examples. Alright, so let's look at some examples of scattering orbits. So with that program, uh, if you modify it for yourself, you can set, you can try different values, as I've done here, set L equal to 8 and E equal to plus 0 0.15. Um, that's not a bound orbit, notice the positive there. Set the um, starting point R to 2000 units in GM on C squared. 2000 GM on C squared. I'm just quoting them dimensionless here. Um, with the program, you can alter other things such as plotting options and so on, which I've done here. You can see that over here to make it dimensionless. And we have here, so here's our set that L equals 8. We get this for the potential. We set the line E equals plus 0.15, here it is. And when we do that, we get this scattering orbit here. And we can see that B is, for L is 8, B is plus 0.15, we get 53.3, .3, which is greater than the 3 root 3 units we saw earlier. Here was a scattering orbit. So coming in from 2000, from essentially a long way out, coming in here, past the Schwarzschild mass of the origin here, the blue object here, and round it goes. All right, next bit. Another example of a scattering orbit. Um, set the angular momentum 7.5 and the energy plus 0.9. Again, start at 2000. So here we go. E is a larger value. And let's see what we get now. And when we do that, uh, we get this orbit here. In it comes around the Schwarzschild mass and scatters off again back off out to infinity. And here B is 7.5 on 0.15. It's still greater than. 3.3 times the square root of 3. Alright, so that condition is satisfied. Another scattering orbit. Different type of orbit. Now for an example of a plunge orbit. L is 10. E is plus 0.2. Notice the energy here. It's greater than the maximum of the angular momentum here. Uh, set for L equals 10 for the potential, sorry. For the potential there. Again, set at R is 2000. Let's see what we get. Alright, um, plunge orbit satisfy this condition. Um, less than this object here, and when we do that, L is 10, and it is 2, is 5, it's just under this because this is 3 root 3 is approximately 5.2, and so that satisfies the condition. And here it is coming in from a long way out, R equals 2000 units, all of GMC squared, out it comes and plunges, spirals in to the Schwarzschild type mass and into the origin. All right. Next example, now fallback and escape orbits, the other two. Now for orbits that start in this range, then the Schwarzschild radius out to one and a half times the Schwarzschild radius. 
the two outcomes B is less than 3 root 3 times GM and C squared, the photon escapes, and for B greater than 3 root 3 GM and C squared, the photon ends at R equals 0. So let's have an example, so an example of a fallback orbit. L is 2.5, E is plus 0.1, and we start now at R equals 2. These are close in orbits. Now will it escape or will it fall back onto the Schwarzschild mass? And so here we go, here's our potential in blue here. Set L equals 2.5, that affects the potential. And then here, E is plus 0.1, and that gives us, here we go, starting at 2 units, anywhere on that circumference there, on the edge of that circle there, Schwarzschild mass. Uh, we're looking down on the equatorial plane with this, by the way. The plotting options you'll see in the program is a parametric plot of the x and y coordinates. And that's why right, back to number of orbits and so on. But if you play with the pro with the notebook, you'll see what happens. So here it starts at two and comes round, and that and finishes back in again. All right, again, b is two point five or zero point one equals twenty five, which is greater than the three root three. So that's for a fallback orbit. That condition there is well satisfied. Let's look at another example. L is eleven point five and E is plus two point five. This time we're going to start at R equals three. That's one and a half times the Schwarzschild radius. Here are our units, here's the energy, angular momentum, potential function there. And we start at 3, and we fall in. There we go, into 2, and continue on units. And B is 5.5, 0.6, possibly 9.2 is greater than 3, root 3. Condition satisfied. It's a fall back in orbit, or a fall in orbit. Keep going. An example of an escape orbit now. We're going to set L is 1, E is 0.5, R equals minus 2.5. Here we go. There's the plots there. What does this look like? And we get here. Now I started here at R equals uh, minus 2.5, so on the left here. And B is 1 over 0.5 is 2, is less than 3.3, so it escapes. So starting here, you can see it escapes out here. Now when you plot this, um, just be aware with this notebook. Um, <coughs> you'll have this line extending out the other side and that's uh, that's a part of the um, the setup of the notebook so delete that that's not actually part of the orbit and it just comes with um, as a result of the numerical integration on this program so you have to interpret it carefully so we start at negative value here and out it goes away uh, next one, another escape orbit example, L is 1, E is plus 2, and starting at R equals minus 2 now, right close to it, right over the Schwarzschild radius, E is plus 2, L is 1, and for that we get, starting at 2 now, and it escapes off to infinity here, and the ratio B is 1 on 2, it is 0 0.5 is less than 3 root 3, and that satisfies the condition for an escape orbit. So I suggest you hop on the internet, find this uh, notebook, and alter it to see yourself if you have Mathematica, or you can adapt into some other software package and play around with it and see what you get.